Allow me to introduce the Bestiary Boy. Using the RuneScape wiki as our guide, we are going to be taking on all monsters the RuneScape has to offer, no matter how small or how large. Welcome to Besting the Bestiary. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Besting the Bestiary. Last episode, we conquered what we could of Combat Bracket 65, and today we begin from Combat Bracket 66. If you want to catch up on the series, we have a playlist linked in the top right or in the description. Let's jump into it. We're starting out Combat Bracket 66 by taking on some of the Dwarven Black Guard. However, this time it's not the regular Pleb Dwarves, we've got the Berserkers. There are three color variants of these guys, and so we will start here with the green, followed by the red, and lastly the blue, which probably flaunts its color scheme the least of the three, really. And weirdly enough, this is the last monster that we can currently kill in this bracket, being the Infernal Mage. These suckers require 45 Slayer to kill. Not really equipped to fight them per se, but you know, that's what prayer's for. And after looking at these guys for a little bit, I see a few different variants. Uh, it looks like just some beard color differences though. So we have the black beard, white beard, green beard, and gray beard Infernal Mages down. Or at least that's what I'm calling them. So, like I said, not much left for us that we can kill in this combo bracket at the moment. We've got the Defiler, which we're still not able to do pest control yet. The Scarab Mage, which this one appears during the contact quest, but with the quest prerequisites, we need to kill at least a combat level 91 before we can even think about this guy. And lastly, we have the Torture, which is also a pest control problem. We're here over at Death Plateau to fight some thrower trolls. I'm starting here because we're going to get rocks tossed at us on the way. But we just need one of these guys up there and then we're out. And throw a troll down. Let's move it. It's time for another wildy run. We are strapped up in our best worst gear and we're taking a trip over to the Wilderness Slayer Cave. Ooh. So we're heading over to take out the stronger variant of the Ice Giant. Just like the last time that we took on some Ice Giants, we have three different variants to kill and I'll mention the differences like usual while I'm killing them. Not got too far of a run from Ferox to get there, so hopefully we just don't run into anyone. I've also done a quick test earlier and we thankfully do not need a Slayer task to kill monsters in there even though it's a Slayer Cave. The first one here has a pointed edged sword, but only has a single ice spike on the top of its head. Our second friend here has a smooth edged sword, which is the only one that has that type. And lastly, we're finishing it off with another pointed ended sword, but this guy has two ice spikes on his head. And that concludes our spooky wilderness trip. Look, unfortunately, that's also all we can take out for this combat racket. I know, it's another small one, but you know, I don't make the rules. I mean, well, I kind of do, but that's not the point. Here's why we can't take anything else remaining in this bracket. We've got another pest control monster, the Defiler, so he's locked away for a while. And we also have a zombie in Tarn's lair, but we need to reach combat level 95 before we can fight him. And that's it. I promise the next one will have a little bit of juice in it. Combat 68 starts us off with taking out the highest level and also the final Katable Pond that we'll ever need to take out. You know, I've legitimately never seen this area before. <laughs> like, I've never had any reason to come to this corner of the stronghold. This is, you know, kind of interesting. We've got another monster in these the weird little necromancer dens on Zaya, whereas this time it's actually the necromancer itself. So hopefully we get the aggro. After running around for a bit, we finally got the aggro and the necro is down. This monster was also added after I started the bestiary spreadsheet of mine because I had to add him in because I didn't have him there. Or maybe I just missed it before, who knows, both is possible. You know, I should have done this when I was here before, but we have another stronghold monster. Uh, this time we're taking on the level 68 skeletons. So I tagged all the ones I need to kill because there are also lower level 60 skeletons here, but we've already taken out those variants beforehand. But it kind of looks like there's only the one single variant of the level 68s because all three of them look the same and down it goes next up we've got more undead ones this time we've got both the zombie and the skeletal versions to take on there's two skeletal variants and there's three zombie variants according to the wiki page and it just so happens the zombie variants are here at the shiloh village entrance so let me just take them out 
Nice, so that is the zombie variants all done now. So now I've just got to locate the skeletal ones. Awesome, in that first dungeon in Shiloh, you look just like last time, and there are some of the level 68s in sight here, and surely the other one isn't too far away. And after some mucking around, that is both of the skeletal undead ones down. Let's skedaddle. Well gang, I thought this was going to be a cruisy one, but I forgot about this next monster. We're going to be taking on a Chasm Crawler next, which is the superior version of a Cave Crawler. Unlike last time, we actually just get to dive straight into the actual monsters without worrying about getting bigger and badder. So what I'm going to do is the same as I did last time, where I'm going to roll a task with Mazkina here, and if it's not Cave Crawlers, I'll do a task skip over at Turiel if I can, for a chance at another roll because they both assign cave crawlers. Doing it this way hopefully speeds up the chance of me getting a cave crawler task and by extension getting the superior. But a quick side note though, I can actually kill every Mazkuna monster now, meaning that I can you know actually farm slayer points without any skips required which I couldn't do before. Do you think that I should just allow myself to start farming slayer points? I'm kind of torn because technically it's not optimal and doing slayer tasks that I don't need to do is technically not my current mission if that makes sense. But slayer points could be useful i don't know let me know what you think and i'll implement any changes the next time we have a superior monster which i believe is the next video uh, oh, i'll have to see <laughs> Oh shit, we actually got it. Oh my god, this was only my second cave crawler task. I was barely even paying attention, honestly, because I didn't think we'd get it this quickly. This is actually our 76th cave crawler to spawn, and that's all it took. So honestly, you know, that was pretty quick. Alright, I'll take the imbued heart now, thanks. Damn. But hey, look at us go. Actually smashing it, to be honest. That's what I'm talking about. On to the next monster. Next up to take out is an ogre called Gorad. This guy has a small feature in the Watchtower quest as a kill requirement. I'm not sure if I need the quest progression to actually kill him, but I will progress into the quest anyways. We can't actually complete the quest because there is a monster that we need to kill later in the quest after Gorad. So I might as well just, you know, make a little bit of progress now. So I'll meet you there. Oh, we made it to Gorad. We didn't really have to do anything yet. <laughs> so that's good. Well, I guess we just talk to him now and then kill him. And that's big bad Gorad down. Alright, here we are at the small island on the north of Fossil Island. Our next monster is a Lobstrosity, which is in the underwater section here, hence the diving gear. Now, I've actually never been down in the diving section here, which, you know, may sound weird, but, you know, I've literally never had a reason to go down here. Apparently, you can only use certain weapons and whatnot, but apparently magic is all good, so I've just got my stuff, my best magic gear ready to go. So I imagine I just duck down there and we should be good to go. Hmm, I'm not sure what this means. But, you know, maybe I can't wield my stuff, so I guess I'm going staffless. Okay, apparently I can't use my headgear through here, so let's just hope I don't die. I'm not really sure how to get there. <laughs> okay, got caught in the current, but we made it. Thank God. All right. Okay, here are the lobstrosities. Hopefully we can kill them fine. All right, lobstrosities down. You know, they were kind of saucing on me a little bit, but that's all right. <laughs> For combat bracket 68, we are currently done for now. We'll be back later down the track, of course. The things that we've got left to take out from here are the Locust Rider Lancer and Ranger versions from the quest, which have the same story as the Scarab Mage, which I mentioned earlier in the video. We have Nazastarul, which I know, I already did some Shiloh Village stuff this video, which this guy is involved with, but unfortunately it is the boss and not even the first phase of it. So we have to kill a higher level monster to get to this guy, so he's on hold until combat level 91. There's another Barbarian Assault monster in the Penance Ranger, which we can't take out yet. There's the Spawn of Seracnus, which is unable to be killed currently because to fight the Spawn of Seracnus, you have to fight Seracnus itself, which is too high of a level. And lastly, we have the Thrower Troll Troll. Trollheim variant. Unlike the ones that we killed earlier in the video, we can't access these ones because Trollheim itself is locked behind this troll stronghold quest, which means I need to fight a combat 113. On to the next bracket. Actually, I figured I'd just open the caskets we got from the very small chasm crawler grind we just did. I went so fast, I actually forgot that I got caskets, to be honest. It's just two beginners and one easy, so don't expect anything nice. And nothing is expected. All right, let's go. Here we are at the Warriors Guild for our first monster for combat bracket 69. We've got the black animated armor which is also, as you probably expect, our new best armor set to kill for the Warrior Guild tokens now. 
Another trip to the God War the dungeon for us, we have an Aviancy on our list now. Just going to arrange it in Mage Gear because that makes sense. And as usual, hopefully don't run into anyone on the way. So there are a lot of different looks for each of the Aviancies, but in terms of the level 69 one specifically, it seems like it's just the single variant. So we don't have to worry about grabbing more than one, I believe. But let's take him out. Not gonna lie, he was kind of shredding me, but Aviancy down. And yo, I got Rune Light Limbs, Rune Crossbow. Oh, that, that's pretty good. I just need fletching to get that one, don't I? Hold on, let me get out of here first. Okay, yeah, all I need now is to just do some fletching stuff to get a rune crossbow if I want to do. The main problem being that I'm currently 10 fletching and I need 69 fletching to get one. It's not really necessary for anything right now, so I will wait on it, but it's a good thing to keep in mind. <laughs> Moving on to a nice and simple one. We've got a hero now, but he won't be the hero here. Next on our list is the Dragon, which is a monster that needs to be fought as part of the Fremenic Trials quest. Now before we get to it though, I just need to make an adjustment to the bestiary list because this affects it in a way. Allow me to explain. Originally I had it down that the Dragon is a monster that we need to kill to finish Fremenic Trials, which would allow us to access Miscellanea. So this is important because there are a lot of NPCs in Miscellanea that we are currently missing that we need to take out. However, there is another man that we need to take out in the quest, and that is Koshay the Deathless. Now, I know you're going to tell me, hey yo, he doesn't have a combat level. But you know, that's kind of the problem. It's kind of true, but it's also untrue. And this is because during the Fremenic Exiles quest, you actually get to see his combat level during the quest, um, even though you don't actually kill him in there or anything. You can right click him when you are fighting the Basilisks in the market. And for this reason, I will not be treating Koshe as a combatless NPC like I have other NPCs such as Solus Deliga. And rather, I'm going to treat him as what we see his combat as, which is 142. <laughs> So this, unfortunately for us, means that all content unlocked by finishing the Fremenic Trials is now locked until combat level 142 as well, which it wasn't going to be that before, it was just going to be at the Dragon. However, this is kind of a small victory for us in a way, and that is because the fact that due to our goals, we want to kill all forms of monsters that we can. And by waiting to 142 combat bracket, we'll have more of a chance to take out Koshe's final phase in the quest because, you know, that's a pretty legit fight. Anyways, let's take on the Dragon. I can do the trials in any order, so I'll just go straight to him. Finally, after running around for what felt like ages, we have found the Dragon, and we shall get him. Hey, beautiful. Now we've got the Mountain Troll. There aren't any explicitly listed variants on the wiki, but I can clearly see right here that there are differences, you know, in color scheme and weapons and whatnot. So I'm just going to run through here and I'm just going to take out all the different types. And this is the last variant that we need to take out. Let's go. With those trolls, we are brought to the end of combat bracket 69 for the moment. We've got three monsters remaining that we can take out. Those being the Nail Beast, which we need to do in aid of a Maya key, which is a 97 combat requirement. And we also have Tarn itself in both the Ghost and the Mutant form, which is the boss of the Tarn's Lair mini quest, but we need the Haunted Mind for that, which is a combat level 95 requirement. And that is going to do it for this episode. A lot more of a straightforward one in comparison to the last one. I've got a few things things to quickly talk about just before we close off though so one i am going to be doing this new little teaser thing at the end of videos so that will come right after i talk in this little segment here it's basically where i'm just going to pick a highlight monster or maybe multiple monsters that will appear in the next video like before i record it just so you kind of know what to look forward to in the next one so be sure to suss the end of the videos from now on if you're curious number two let me know what you think about the slayer points grinding when it relates to getting superiors because i am happy to just skip where i can to get more slayer task rolls like i have been doing but i'm also happy to just you know get slayer points number three runescape hd from 117th game just came out during the recording of this video uh the next video i'm gonna continue with these graphics that i've got right here but i might swap over to the hd client for an episode to see how things go uh, but if people are against the HD graphics, let me know. I don't mind which graphics setting I play on, to be honest. But, you know, I'd like to make it watchable for you guys because I'm not sure how everyone feels about it. But you won't have to worry about that for a few episodes. That's about all for me. I will see you next time. Have a good week. Enjoy the little teaser. And I'll see you later.